Um, so, I, my interest in audiobooks came originally from my, uh, like, cassette days. No, yeah. um, so, I've been listening to it for an awfully long time, even though I've listened to an awful lot of um, Belinda audiobooks. Now, I'm a huge fan of audiobooks, my kids love them and everything. And so, when we see uh, like an infographic like this, we think, oh, fantastic, yeah, we all love audiobooks. But this is actually, like, if you want a perfect example in your research lessons of misinformation, this is a really good one because it looks, it's by the Audio Publishers Association. Um, they give a lovely bibliography. It looks increases motivation by 76%, increases motivation by 67%. There's something funny going on here. <laughs> and it definitely increases. Quite 52%. Everybody, <laughs> without a doubt. Uh, this is actually from some research in 1950 of uh, parents reading to children. See, getting my point, I've actually, wow. this was in 2016, I was introduced to this, exactly the same infographic. I read all the bibliography several times over. I'm like, I must be able to find this percentage somewhere in that research. And I was going completely crazy. Like, I could spend hundreds of hours on that bibliography. Um, it's not there. <laughs> okay? So, um, while we love audiobooks, this is misinformation. And there is not enough research about <coughs> audiobooks, unfortunately. And that's what really surprised me because we read these actual books, entire books published by the American Library Association, uh, that say there is research about audiobooks, a growing body of research about audiobooks, and they quote <coughs> the same things, and it's other people saying that there's lots of research, and they're quoting the other people that are saying there's lots of research, so there must be somewhere, and I'm like, where, but could you just show me where it is? Okay, so, um, I have actually, just going back two slides, I sporadically um, add to this blog about, I'd love it to become a repository of all audiobook research that we find. Um, my uh, area of interest is, I studied pre-adolescence, so grades four to six, is when most, like uh, generally, reading comprehension and listening comprehension is comparable. So I didn't want to look at audio books being remedial um, or for EAL. So there is a bit more research, but it's, it's a bit light on about EAL and um, for remedial uh, accessing text. So I wanted to look at fluent readers and writers that have very comparable um, reading and listening comprehension. Okay, so that's my focus. However, um, I have actually touched on the other things as well in my um, <laughs> uh, research. Um, so this lovely, uh, please, please do go to that bibliography. I did get a um, response from the Audio Publishers Association to say thank you very much for pointing this out to us. We are going to, I know, just very recently, like in the last week or so, I know, uh, we are looking to update this. <laughs> Show your students that email. I've done the same with something else and I've shown the email. That's a powerful lesson. Yeah, yeah. okay. I, like, I really yeah. like that. I hadn't thought about like, connecting yeah. it to the response. So, yeah, um, but it's so convincing. And even um, Barb pointed out the Australian Book Council uh, showing it on their
brain activation, uh, the same parts of your brain are activated whether it's reading or listening. And it's the complexity, these studies found that it was the complexity of the language rather than the input method. Um, however, as I, I, I would love to, so, I mean, this is very, very, very convincing research that's, um, that has a very uh, rigorous research, but um, there is always this danger of applying this because what about if you're a six-year-old that hasn't learnt uh, to read very well and you're listening to an audio book that uh, is way above your reading comprehension, I can't imagine that your brain scan would actually be the same. So like with a little bit of uh, hesitancy, so these were uh, podcasts, they were, um, it seemed like it was, it was adults and they were listening to it so their reading comprehension would be um, uh, very uh, advanced. Okay, so in my research, and I will, it is very much a workshop model, that's how I love you, because I, I would love to hear from you and I do not have all the answers, but when I had a very small sample and it was qualitative, it was narrative inquiry research, um, but the, my participants found that they loved just getting story ideas, like, and I feel like as librarians, that's our, that's our job, just get many stories as they possibly can in any format. Um, so audiobooks are an additional um, way to do that. Uh, one of my participants, uh, I asked him if he, his parents liked him listening to audiobooks and he said, yes, because I don't sing like, like, like. Mm -hmm. But, my like, you know, son has listened to audiobooks all his life but he still says like, so, <laughs> so put it down there. I, with the vocabulary in context, when students are reading and they come up with a new word, they could actually sort of either, like, either not, happens to all of us, not be able to pronounce it, or sort of like, uh, getting a bit stuck, uh, whereas, and, and sort of stop, whereas with an audio book, it keeps going, and then you're like, oh, okay, that's, that must be what that word meant. They did refer to it as reading an audio book, which I, you know, based on the functional MRI scans, I, forget, I think, can safely say that. Um, they were all self-motivated to listen in their free time. So it wasn't part of the class, um, it's it, like just because I want to listen to an audio book. But some, and this is where I hesitate, you say, oh we all love audio books, <laughs> but mm, not for everybody. So this idea of haptic distance <coughs> means that it's this tactile, and this is there is some quite good research about um, e-books, and how they need to make it, and there's, there's a lot of design science that goes into it about making it a better experience. But we do, like, yeah, it's a multi sensory, you smell the book, you feel the book, you flip the pages. So it's, it's not for everyone, it is a digital um, thing. So just <laughs> promoting the whole um, Belinda uh, model here, it, um, and I'm not working for Belinda or anything like that, but um, Barb has. has I think, really think it was you two that I uh, got a consortium model going and I think, oh, fine, this could be the answer to what libraries have been looking for because it's so difficult to lend out um, an individual um, borrower's model. Like, it's super easy for years of being a Platinum Audible member, but I can't lend them to other people. Like, we have to have the lending rights for the library. So this is just such, like, certainly not to the exclusion of e-books, um, like, obviously this session is just about audio, um, but uh, I'd like to come back to that. And just to talk about, I guess, my, my questions are going to be all around, like, how do you promote them? Uh, yes, I love the little things that go in the, in the, in the book. Um, so promotional materials, but it's this, it's this out of sight, out of mind uh, piece. And you have to keep pushing it as well, which, which is obviously the same with all um, uh, books and everything. But and it's also this um, idea that, what? I didn't know that like, they read it to you? They read the entire book to you, sort of thing? So it's a, like a feeling of, we don't really know what they are. Um, and I just wanted to uh, also just point out, I, I, I recently watched, uh, listened to a web or watched a webinar, about the ideal libraries um, from the IBO. I don't know if you, uh, if 
familiar with it. I sort of feel like maybe it's something we should be talking about. Um, that document, if you're an IB um, school, uh, is available. There's a pretty copy floating around on somebody's uh, site as well. But uh, so it's called it's the Ideal Libraries document. But they do really talk about the whole multimodal how we set up for um, delivering and audio as part of that multimodal learning. So um, are there, like, I guess to start a discussion, I think we're small enough group to sort of all talk together. Because um, I'd love to hear, um, like I'm looking for ways to help promote it more, and like <coughs> people listening. Um, are there, has anyone got a, like, a really, like, idea that's worked really, really well, uh, or any questions that like how to get into offering audio books? This is just a general. Yeah. Well, uh, I just uh, uh, had an interesting perspective hearing this through. Is that um, if you think of audio books as a gateway for kids into literature, and tie it into assumptions that I've heard, I don't know if there's research, but children whose parents read to them, maybe there's a correlation that those students.